Welcome back, Cersei here. Today we're going to be going over item exchangers in 1.14. An item exchanger is a redstone contraption which allows one item to be put into a system and that item to be exchanged for another such item. As you can see, I put six gold in and received six redstone lanterns back out. I've come up with two designs. Uh, both here and over there. One which is a set one-to-one -one exchange system, and the other which allows a variable price and variable output. And today I'm going to be going over both of them. Both of these are designs I've come up with myself, and I believe that they're both smaller than anything previously seen. There's another lamp sitting around there. This is my design for the one-to-one -one system. It uses a simple item filter here that I currently have crafting tables as the locking item. Of course, you can have anything in that slot, which trades gold for lanterns, which I have up in the stock here. This exchanger is two by four by four, and it does require a border. You cannot put it directly next to each other without the hoppers inter interacting with each other uh, and them locking at each other. However, it does work very fast. It counts individual items and it works quite well. One downside of it is it is a little loud, but personally I quite enjoy that. From the front, it can be fully hidden. You can see here that the only showable showing parts are this hopper down here. Uh, this glass can be completely swapped out for anything. The floor, of course, is not required. And the only required parts is something holding up this redstone right here, a full block here, this redstone here, and this redstone block here. Of course, you could cover that up, but for aesthetic's sake, I have it not because technically it doesn't, it doesn't actually do anything for the... It doesn't do anything for the filtering part of the shop, and therefore should be fine for random player access if you were to have this in a shop on a server. So, this design, very small, it uses a filter, basic filter system here with a comparator coming out of it going into a, a redstone line here. The entire system is based around this observer, which triggers both of these pistons. Um, fast enough in order to cause a flip-flop based, a flip-flop mechanic. If I put 64 into here, you can see that within action, you can see the line flipping on and off as items are sifted through. And you can see the redstone from the observer being flicked on and off very, very quickly in order to both lock and unlock this hopper and to allow this to be, allow the dropper to fire. Take that out there. And you can see we've collected quite a few lamps. The system is very small, very basic, and very good for one-to-one, -one, but what if you want more than one-to-one? -one? The next design allows for a variable price input rather than the locked one-to-one -one of the other system. For instance, on this current design, the price is currently set to eight items in for one item out. And you can see that if I were to put eight items in, it will count those eight items in, go through a system, and deliver us one out. However, there are already some in there. I can demonstrate that once more, very simply, by placing another eight items in, and there's the one item back out. This is, uh, as far as I know, the smallest design that has been come up with that can do what this does. It's extremely compact, coming in at 8 blocks long by 8 blocks high by 6 blocks wide. It does require a border. You cannot put it directly next to another one, but that is not that large of a problem, generally as the shops need to be apart anyway. It does have a cashback system for in case you do not put in the full price. So you can see that if I were to put in seven items, we know our price is eight, so seven won't go through. Putting in seven items 
will cause the system to not work, of course. But getting that back is fairly easy. You can simply press this button, wait for the system to go through, and your seven gold will be down in the lower hopper. Of course, that could be easily carted out to a area right here, perhaps coming up out of a dropper in this block. Um, I simply have it going down because it's variable. You can do whatever you want with it. Same with this hopper line, which is where the uh, profits come out. So, variable price. The varying price is very simple. Um, it allows you, uh, it requires the player to simply just change the amount of items in this hopper. And because of the cashback system, you also have to change it in this hopper. Uh, so we've just changed the amount of items inputted to 16 required. And let's say we want to change the amount of items to be outputted to 3. And lastly, in order to complete the system, you do need to change this hopper. Uh, so we added an extra eight items into uh, the system to be inputted. So we need to remove eight items from this. Uh, fairly simple here, just to remove up to eight. And there we go, we're left with three. So now you will see that if we place in 15 items. Of course, this won't work because our price is 16. Make sure our system is empty. Of course it is. Putting in another though, making that 16 full price will output the three blocks that we requested. And you can see the system just reset. Um, an easy way of knowing if the system is running or not is a resident lab here. This can go anywhere from two items in to 63 items in is its highest and its output can be anywhere from 1 to 320 20 items out. The system is 100% unbreakable. Uh, any attempt to break it will simply stop a transaction. For instance, having a transaction going, how many did I put in? Uh, we'll just put in a few more. Of course, it stops the input. Trying to press the cashback button while the system is going doesn't result in anything. Trying to start a transaction while the cashback system is active will simply result in all of your money flowing out into the cashback system and the transaction not going through. It is, as far as I can find, impossible to break. Of course, here's our profits down here, and we got the five gold back out there. going to make sure that I did actually just not break the system. Uh, we'll put in 16 items and wait for it to start. I did set this to 16, correct? I did set it to 16. Oh, I already had five items in there, of course, because I had not hit the cashback button. And that was from that extra 12 that I had put in. My, my apologies. So, while being a terrible conjunction of a mess of redstone, uh, this is completely operating on known mechanics. Um, there is no glitch-based mechanics for redstone in this. Uh, I specifically made sure that... Um, the one part of this that I was unsure of if it was a glitch-based or a bug-based mechanic in Redstone, I specifically actually did not use. So this entire system should go back to 1.7 uh, and should continue to be useful through future versions. Building it is not that simple, but we can get onto that in the later part of the video. I can show you here how to uh, up the price input to up to 63. The biggest problem with going over uh, 18 items in is that you actually have to change a small amount of redstone, and that is because the comparator output would have to go from an extra 2 to an extra 3. However, it's really not that hard by simply adding a few extra lines here 
and a repeater there, and a repeater here, and this, and this, you end up with the exact same system. So, here, now our price is set for anything above 19 items in, so we will set that to be correct. Uh, the 19 items in is, I need to look at a very fast little thing. Uh, the On the wiki, you can easily find all the input amounts for hoppers and cause different signal strengths. For three, it is 46 items. So through a very fast calculation, we can go 46 items, negative our price of 19, and then we need to negative five off of that as that is the amount of slots, and each slot has to be filled in order to give the hopper amount, or uh, in order to give the filter system. Um, so, uh, our final answer is 22 items, so we will put that in, and our price should now be set to 19. We'll need to go around to the side and set that up as well to 20, that is 20. Make sure when you're changing the price you don't actually pull these items out, as doing that will cause the comparator systems to go off and think a purchase has be, uh, been done, therefore draining out um, parts of the filter. Though it's very easy, simply use right click to cut it in half to a point that it is manageable. So, our price should now be set to 19. We've configured both hoppers and we have configured the bottom hopper here. Our output price is still set at 3. I will simply grab that back out. Still set at 3, as you can see. And we will put in 19 items. So, going up to 18, this sh shouldn't do anything. Of course, waiting it to drain in, hoppers are quite slow, and upon the 19th being placed in, we get nothing. Uh, as I am stupid and dumb. That is the issue. We need 23 items, fun fact. So, the system is now draining out, and we get our 3 output. Voila, and you will see that the system has been reset. Another 19 items in, and we can see the exact same thing happening. While items are draining in, by the way, if you were to press the cashback button, it would simply stop the transaction and cause it to go through and give you full cashback. And there is our full price back out. Of course, this can go up to 63. That requires another quick change in the redstone. However, it's not too bad. Um, simply giving this up to... I'm just copying this from down below here. Do, do, do. Boop. Boop. Ah. Of course. That is what's wrong. Boop. And voila. So now our redstone line is four long on each side, which is exactly what we need in order to trigger said pistons, and this is required in order to stop anything from breaking. Now, setting our price to something of that caliber, let's go all the way up to 63 items. So a 63 item set price in will requires there to be 63 items in this, and 63 items in this in order to allow the cashback system to work. Finally, you will have to edit the hopper for this, and quick mathematics again here can do, as if we go consult our chart, we can see that at 4, in order to get a signal strength of 4, you need 1 stack and 5 items, which is 69 items. So, 69 items 
negative 5 for the all slots to be filled and negative a price of 69 oh, not of course sorry uh, of 63 and that comes out as one extra so if we pull all of this out and that was why so now we need one extra being put in voila there's now two in that slot and our system is now set for 63 input we can change the output up to a maximum of 320 which of course is five stacks and just making sure that our system actually has those five stacks loaded probably a good idea we'll put a little extra in just to make sure and here it is we'll now put in a full 62 items leave the last one just for fun and that will take just a minute to drain in as it is again hoppers are not the fastest thing getting close here you can see that this is slowly powering up up to a up to three and now we're finished that we can put the last one in and our entire system will activate you can see this lamp here anything close to this orange block here that is powering this hopper you can see the hopper is powered so no more can be inputted uh, anything that is next to this block um, or showing off of this line will tell you when the system is active this lamp I have just sitting here in order to know when the system is active you can see there that was the 63 items that just drained out you can see them down in our profits area and you can see the system slowly draining a very many five stacks of items back into our output of course the entire system is currently active right now um, the uh, you could attempt to put in another transaction right now but it would not work as the system is currently locked you could try to put another bunch of items in but it would not work this does of course handle a multitude of transactions over time as it locks the input hopper whenever a transaction is active so you can just basically if there was a price that was this high five stacks quite a bit going to take quite a bit of time you could just drop five stacks of whatever you're inputting in and leave it for a few minutes and it would continue through and finish up of course this is just counting up we still have an entire other stack to do and you can see that, that stack is just finishing up here transaction hasn't quite finished until this is you can see that the uh, the profit and filtering system has completely finished and reset however of course you don't want to start another transaction until this is done so that's what this line is for um, highly important if that line was not there locking this entire system the it would simply allow the system to do another transaction while it was still trying to output and that would be problematic as you can imagine and here we are with our five stacks of emerald blocks on to building it and starting out with building so I'm going to be building this uh, sort of mirroring the side because memorizing the entire thing is incredibly difficult. I did forget to mention um, last time you'll notice that when I stopped recording and did the cut, uh, the lamp was still on. That's because in order for even once it finishes draining all five stacks of items, it needs to wait for all those five stacks of items to drain back. So there is a double sort of time there from the time that you get all of your items to the time that the system is fully reset and ready to go I thought I should mention that just in case anyone wasn't sure starting out here you'll need to start out with two hoppers um, one of uh, these can be going either direction I have them going down into uh, into chests you could have them coming forward you know in something like this in order to go off that direction but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to have them going this. This is your profit. This is your cashback system. 
I did mention before you could have your cashback system go forward and go into a dropper system, but of course up to you. You want some place that the uh, customer can access it because they need their cashback. Going into it, we're going to grab a dropper and we're going to place the dropper on top of the cashback system and we are uh, we're going to go woo, one higher than that. We're going to go one we're going to we're going to we're going to have messed up the level at which we are operating at. Haha. There it is. You're going to have to go one higher placing a dropper upon there and running a hopper into that dropper and then a hopper into that hopper and then finally a hopper coming from the front of the dropper into that hopper. The next thing you'll have to do is start on one of the systems. You can see each system is color coded so we're going to start on the most basic part of the system which is the lime green, the counting part. From that we'll need some redstone, uh, we'll need piston this, that, the other thing and hoppers, and I believe that is it, yes. So, your main hopper, oh, and we need the input hopper, of course, right there. Your main hopper is going to be this hopper, right here, the center hopper. This is the most important hopper, as it is the filtering hopper. So we're going to come out of that hopper, and we're going to go to the side, because we need to bring a comparator input out of it. Uh, we're going to run that to both directions. We're going to go run it there and there. Um, not there actually, and go that way and that way. On this side, you're going to need to, oh, I have, I need to reimagine my system for a second, do, 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 does it go up? Yes, it goes up, of course it goes up, it goes up, my apologies, there, there, and it needs to do this, this and you need to have a what's that called? A horn pipe. I love pirate speak. We're going to need to have that with an observer on it. The observer is going to you're going to have to place a system like this. Okay. This is going to be the first of the hopper clocks required in order to keep the system running. You can see that that thing is slowly going through a, uh, those five stacks of items that I placed in that at the end, at the cut of the last. You're going to bring an output out of this hopper into a lock here, taking that into a piece of redstone and taking that into a piston which has a observer facing upwards. That observer is going to be used in order to trigger that counting system. So. Voila! There is the uh, most of the green parts. Now, moving on, we're going to go into the next color, which is going to be, uh, I'm going to call the, what should we do next? We'll do the yellow next. The yellow system is the cashback system. So the first part of the cashback system is the part that actually pulls out of this line right here. Uh, highly important because it is needed now. Is this made of glass? No, it's not. Of course it's not made of glass. Um, this is the hopper that will be filled with gold. I didn't show you that beforehand, but it's filled with gold in order to allow the cashback system to only filter the gold out of the main system. So this system is not that hard. You're going to simply have an area down here. Set this repeater to zero ticks. Set this repeater to two ticks on. This repeater is going to, this repeater should feed into this hopper because that is the hopper it has to lock. This repeater is going to feed into a block in order to activate that dropper but it is also going to feed into ahead of it in order to lock the hopper in front. We need to go up with the torch and take that line off here going back over to here. There needs to be another repeater here in order to uh, delay this slightly. I think that needs to be set to a single tick. It does. This needs to continue down here into this area and we'll leave it at that for now. You now have the cashback system active. Next thing coming up we're going to do the light blue system. Uh, 
the light blue system is the part that counts for the cashback system. It is the um, it is the hopper clock that operates in the background. So uh, it actually runs into this block right here because its job is it needs to lock that hopper. So we're going to run it up, and I believe it runs up two blocks back and then is glass. Yes, two blocks back, and I forgot the glass. Going to need to go get that. Boom, 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 voila. Uh, you're going to need to have a comparator here because otherwise it will uh, have problems with other areas around other parts. You're going to run two pieces of redstone. No, one piece of redstone. One piece of redstone followed by a comparator, followed by three pieces of redstone. Don't worry about this right now, we're going to actually block that off doing that. The next thing to do is going to be to actually set up the hopper clock here. We want this to be active by default, so we want a block right there, a block of redstone. This hopper clock is going to go underneath this redstone, like so and the output from said hopper clock is going to come from the back like so it's going to lead into two blocks going here and a piston there that comparator of course leading into this piston and lastly a observer here in order to trigger the piston to run the clock the part above needs to come from... Oh, of course you don't need a block there, yes. So, the part above, in order to feed in from the signal in the frontal area, you need, you're going to need a piston there, and you're going to need a block there, and a block here, and a piece of redstone here, and that will be used in order to start the clock for the cashback system. That is the line and piston that is hooked up to the button to start the cashback system. So you're already actually most of the way done here. Uh, there's a few things you need. We're going to go onto the orange system. The orange system is the the orange and red system are locking systems. They're used for the uh, the orange system is used. I forgot to do this. My apologies. You're going to need a comparator on the green system here, and a block there. Uh, you can actually make that orange. It's very much up to you. It doesn't really matter. The, of, of course, orange because it's part of the locking system. So, for the locking system, you're going to need to have a block here in order to lock that. You're going to need to place another block under here, this is underneath this block that runs from the comparator, and beside your profit line. You need to block, put a block there, and a torch upon it. Two blocks down, and another torch in order to make that work. You're going to need to take a line down from here. Sorry, I seem to have placed this in the wrong spot. This note block doesn't actually go here, it in fact goes up here. Works the exact same way, still causes the block update. That gives us room to run this line down, like so. Going to just quickly grab some redstone powder, run that down, just like so. That, of course, is taking a input off of this redstone block whenever a transaction is active. Basically this line right here is the most important line. This line will is the one that is on whenever a transaction is whenever the money is, whenever a transaction is active and the money is being drained. So uh, next is the red line. The red line runs from the uh, from the orange line, and the red line's purpose is in order to block the cashback system. This is the part that stops the cashback system from being able to be used while ah uh, uh, be able to be used while 
the a transaction is going on. If you didn't have that red part, it would make it so that you could start a transaction, then press the cash back button and get half of your money back, uh, but the transaction would still go through. So very important red part. The last uh, part is going to be the magenta part. This is the part that actually gives you items. Um, we can actually run this right now. Uh, you're going to, in fact, I would recommend getting it set up. So we're going to set this up for eight items just as a template because I know everything for eight items. This hopper is always going to be the same. You're going to want to go to this hopper. Actually, first of all, it should be noted. You're going to want to have some sort of lock here. doesn't matter what. And a trapdoor, or sorry, a uh, tripwire hook upon that block. That is to get this line to turn. Um, of course, a tripwire hook does nothing on its own, but it does cause redstone to point towards it. And the reason that, that is important is if you want blocks along here, if that line was pointed forward, it would also lock the hopper directly under it. So it's very important that you don't have that, and it's very important that you do have that, pardon me, uh, that tripwire hook there. Uh, this hopper right here, you're going to need to put gold into. This is the one, this is part of the cashback system, and it is uh, very important for... Uh, for only filtering gold through. The cashback system works by draining out the filtering hopper, which is this middle one, and we'll fill in a minute. Uh, it drains all the gold out of it, but leaves the redstone due to this filter, and then it just siphons out a singular one using the dropper to put back in here and siphons the rest into the chest below. So, in this hopper, this never changes. You always keep this the same. It is 18, and uh, the rest of the slot's filled. Into the um, this hopper, of course, this ho the filtering hopper changes depending on what your price is, but in this case we're going to go for 8 items, and because I know it off the top of my head. We're going to go up to 11 items there, followed by the rest filled and one piece of gold. Going over here, we're going to want to put 8 items into here. You'll see this system charges as soon as you put 8 items in. And the same with this system right here. 7, 8, and there. Okay. Now, we actually should here have a perfect 8-item siphoning system. So if we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and put it in, this won't do anything. As soon as we put the 8th in, it'll go through. Cook all of that up. of gold stuck in here. Is that an issue over here? Highly interesting. Ah, it's because this is a chest and not a hopper. That's why. Because on this system over here, the hopper pulls from the top, and here it does not. So that could be easily fixed by just having a hopper here instead. I was wondering why that happened. So we did get our eight gold profit there. Uh, we can do it once more just for funsies, and we'll go through uh, having a block on top of uh, that will cause it to not actually go through. And you can see it has drained those next eight gold out and worked perfectly fine. We're going to want to check our uh, cashback system very quickly by putting seven in and then um, quickly causing this system to go. Uh, so you can see that there are seven in there. And it should go through. And voila! We have our seven back, and our system is fully working. So, we have just completed the cashback system and the part of it that takes your money. Now, of course, we need the part that gives you something back, which is very much so the easiest part of this build. Um, going to need to actually change around this system slightly. I forgot about this, as I am so used to building it the other way and forgot that I had to change it around. So. This observer, we need to actually take an output from it, so we're going to actually turn it around. This observer was the one at the um, 
hopper here, a hopper clock here uh, for the input. So we're going to take that out of there. We're going to get some green wool just to stay consistent. And we're going to take an input from that and we're going to put it just into a block right here. And that's simply just going to, when it gets close, it's going to activate that piston. It does the exact same thing, except this time it allows us to take an output from this piston. So, lovely, lovely. What we're going to do is we're going to build the uh, system above here, and I actually don't know this off the top of my head because I changed it so many times. You can see there's many, many, many a system uh, that direction, and I got a little excited to make the video, so I didn't actually look at it. So, we're going to place a few things along here. We need a repeater here in order to not move in with that redstone. Uh, this is perfectly fine. You can do that there. And we're going to need a uh, an obs a a comparator next to that. Um, the reason that neither of both of these are comparators, they both could be. Actually, this one has to be a comparator. Uh, this one is a comparator because it needs the redstone cannot interact with that uh, comparator there. Here we're going to do a sideways hopper clock uh, because it is spatially effective. Um, we're going to use a piston in order to push this, in order to have a redstone block on this. Scared me for a moment. I thought that I had just activated something somehow. And we're going to put this here. You need, of course, when it's pushed forward, you need the other hopper to be locked. So we're going to put something there. And this is actually going to be our output. This is the line right there that you can lead into anywhere you want in order to have the uh, output system running. You could run it anywhere else, but for compacting sake, I actually have it just running into a little bit right here. We need the output from this. Now we need to finish this hopper clock, so we're going to take the output from here, like so. Right? As, no, it's the other side. Haha, ha, fun fact. My apologies. Other side, going into a block, and not going into a block. I need to stop getting ahead of myself. Going into a piston. The piston going into holding a observer. And the observer will be pushed up in a moment once the system is charged. The last thing you need to do is actually get this to have an input, of course. This the entire reason we changed this down here so that we could feed an input up. So we're going to take from this redstone right here, we're going to put one observer and a second observer. And that, ob and that is going to make it so that as soon as a transaction happens, uh, this piston is triggered and our hopper clock begins. Now, in order to charge the system, very simplistically, we're going to have to it actually sits forward, doesn't it? This has to be forward by default. This is a very important note. Um, if it was back, you'd actually end up draining all of your items constantly. So this has to be forward by default. And that means that this is the hopper this one here on the far outside is the hopper that holds your items for count. We're going to put one in because we're doing eight to one right now as our price. And there we go. Our system should now be completed. We're going to simply just finish by running the light blue line forward, perhaps to a button. Hmm. Perhaps to a button like so. And placing a block there in order to cause it to not be active. And just like so, we have a complete system. So we can check this by just having, um, of course, this line can go out anywhere. You can have it come out as far as you want. But in this case, I'm going to just have it come out a little bit. We're going to have a dropper there. It couldn't really be any inventory. I'm using a dropper out of convenience. And what shall we have this trade for? We shall have a trade for note blocks. Voila, there's one note block and two groups of note blocks. And you can see that is completely locked right now. Currently, we are trading eight gold in for this out. Let's do it for, no, it's basically just two to one. We're going to do eight gold for 10. Sure, that sounds like a good number. So, 
putting our 8 gold in, our system is still charged. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we're going to drop that in. And you can see our entire system has gone active. And we drain 10 in, and our transaction is complete. Our 8 gold is down in the bottom, and everything is working as intended. One last check to make sure our cashback system is active, putting in 6, not our full price. And activating the cashback system. And getting back our 6 gold. So, there you have it. That is a completed transaction system. A completed exchange system, redstone contraption, within an 8 by 8 high by six wide area uh, unbreakable fully fully working and as compact as I could get it I hope you enjoyed and I hope this comes in use to you and I will see you all another time